Whenever we take a molecule that contains hydrogen atoms and we place it inside the proton NMR spectrometer, that proton NMR spectrometer will basically produce a graph known as the proton NMR spectrum. The proton NMR spectrum basically describes the chemical shift values of all the hydrogen atoms found in that particular molecule. Now to see exactly what the proton NMR spectrum actually looks like, let's take a look at the following example. Let's consider the terbutyl methyl ether molecule. So basically we take this mo molecule, we place it inside the proton NMR spectrometer, and it gives us the following graph known as the proton NMR spectrum. So every proton NMR spectrum consists of an X and the Y axis. The X axis designates or describes the chemical shift value of our protons inside those H atoms. And this is given in units known as ppm or parts per million. So basically as we go from the left side to the right side, the chemical shift value decreases. So this region here of our spectrum, the right section, is known as the upfield section. That's because we have more shielding taking place and a greater magnetic field is required to induce the chemical shift of the H atom. Now the left section of our spectrum is known as the downfield section. Here we have less shielding taking place, also known as de-shielding, and because we have less shielding taking place, a smaller magnetic field is required to produce or induce that chemical shift. So that means as we go from the left side to the right side, the magnetic field B the strength of the magnetic field B increases and that is shown by this blue arrow. Now each one of these peaks is known as a signal. So a signal refers to the peak that is produced by our protons inside those hydrogen atoms. So basically the y-axis designates the intensity of those signals, the height of those signals. The greater the height is, the more intense our signal is. And we're going to see what the intensity tells us in just a moment. So let's briefly discuss what the process of shielding is. So what exactly do we mean by more shielding and what exactly do we mean by less shielding? This will basically help us describe what this signal corresponds to and what this higher intensity signal corresponds to. So recall in our previous lecture, in our previous discussion on chemical, uh, chemical shifts, we said that a chemical shift of any hydrogen proton, of any proton inside the hydrogen atom, basically depends on the local environment, the neighboring environment around that particular nucleus. So the higher the density of electrons is around that particular hydrogen atom, the more more they will shield, those electrons will shield that hydrogen atom from the magnetic field. So that means the magnetic field around a region where there is a high electron density will decrease and so to produce a chemical shift or resonance of such a hydrogen that is shielded, we need to increase the magnetic field strength. Now for less shielded H atoms, the electron density is smaller and a smaller magnetic field is required to produce that chemical shift. So basically, <coughs> those signals that are found more downfield basically contain a less elect a smaller electron density. However, those signals that are found more upfield have more shielding taking place, a higher electron density around that particular H atom, and that means a greater magnetic field is required to produce that that chemical shift. So let's take a look at the following molecule and see what these peaks actually correspond to. So we have two types of H atoms. We have one type of H atom that is found on this terbutyl group and the second H atom that is found on this methyl group. And these two types of different atoms, uh, hydrogen atoms, will basically produce different signals. The question is, what does this signal correspond to and what does this signal 
electrical correspondence. So remember, the greater the electron density is, the more shielding we will have and the more upfield that H atom will be found. Now, the third butyl group has a much greater electron density. We have many more H atoms and many more carbon atoms and that electron density will create more shielding and so these H atoms will produce a signal that will be found more upfield than compared to the H atom found on this carbon, on the methyl group, because here we have a smaller electron density and so we have less shielding. So we see that for the third butyl methyl ether molecule, the third butyl hydrogens contain a much larger electron density and so are said to be more shielded than the methyl hydrogens which contain less electron density. Therefore we see that this, these H atoms will be found more upfield and will require a greater magnetic field. So the magnetic field strength here will be greater than here. So basically, these correspond to our third butyl and these correspond to our methyl H atoms. Now, the question is, what exactly is the importance of the height? So we might notice that we have nine H atoms here and only three H atoms here. And we have nine H atoms here and the height of this is much greater than the height of this. In fact, the height of this is approximately three times as great as the height of this. So we actually see via a process known as integration, we can use the height or the intensity of our signals to basically describe the ratio of the H atoms. So if we take the ratio, if we take the height of this to the height of this, that will give us a ratio of 9 to 3 or 3 to 1. And a ratio of 3 to 1 simply means we have 3, 3 times as more H atoms that correspond to this peak than to this peak. So once again, we can use the relative intensities of each peak to approximate the number number of hydrogen nuclei that each peak corresponds to and this process is known as the integration of signals. So basically we take the height of signal 1 divided by the height of signal 2 and that gives us the ratio of hydrogens in signal 1 to signal 2.